What if I told you there was an area in Genshin Impact that has nothing but ancient ruins and the remains of dead gods? Now what if I expanded on that thought by telling you in this area there exists only one person? A pale-skinned woman all by her lonesome playing an instrument and singing a song of a bygone race. You know, I like to think of myself as a bridge. Okay, I'm a, I'm a bridge for you guys that don't have the will or the time to delve into the lore. And I'm okay serving that role. I'm a bridge. I'm a bridge. Anyway, do you guys remember when Scar Moose said the skies were fake? The stars. The sky. It's all a gigantic hoax. A lie. And Dottore echoed that same sentiment. Let me ask you. Have you, in all your mighty knowledge, ever heard the rumor that the skies of Tevat are fake? Huh? That's the secret hidden by Ermin's soul concerning the truth of this world. Do you guys know what they were talking about? Maybe you do, but in case you don't, let's read the description of the all-devouring narwhal in the archives. A mysterious and gargantuan creature from another world. Poets often liken the starry sky to the ocean. They've seen or dreamt of countless bioluminescent plankton floating on a moonless sea resembling a galaxy or the moonlight ripped apart by waves on the sea's surface. Like shimmering stars in the most fantastical stories or outrageous lies, the stars found in the depths of the cosmos might be teeming with life, much like Tevat's, and the universe itself is akin to an ocean. Realistically speaking, however, if a profound universe full of life exists, why hasn't any of that life made contact with Tevats? Maybe the universe has been constantly trying to infiltrate Tevats. Or maybe a higher power created borders to protect this world. That final sentence really is something, huh? Maybe a higher power created borders to protect this world. We know exactly who this higher power was and what this border is. All we have to do is look at our Bible before sun and moon. Quotes the primordial one may have been Thanes. It had wings and a crown and was birthed from an egg, androgynous in nature, but for the world to be created, the egg shell had to be broken. However, Thanes, the primordial one, used the egg shell to separate the universe and the microcosm of the world. Well, now that's interesting. So it seems like Fanes, when he created humanity, used the egg from which he was born to close to that off from not only the rest of the universe, but also the rest of the world. And as history has demonstrated, he doesn't take too kindly to outlanders visiting to that. Maybe Fanes is overprotective of humanity, and that's why he threw up the border, fleeing some sort of disaster from his homeland, knowing what the rest of the universe is like. But I'm, I'm curious, if there is an entire universe with life, how has Tevat only seen three Descenders since the wall was put up? And how do these Descenders even get in if the security is this tight? It's not like they're like trying to break in, at least the Traveler wasn't. Uh, I don't know, maybe they're all being summoned by humans, but this is a topic for another day. I want to specifically focus on Earth, because as we know, Tevat is merely a continent that is being shielded off from the rest of the planet. Celestia doesn't rule the world, they rule the continents. And the areas they don't rule that extend beyond the continent is called the Dark Sea. And speaking of dark, guys, I am black, by the way. This might come as a shock to many of you, so if I ever say the word nigga, we, we don't need like four comments going, Oh my god, did, did he just say that? I mean, I mean, yeah, probably I did. I don't, I don't, I don't mean to if it, if it makes you feel better, but I mean, if you still want to get offended on my behalf, <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> Anyway, the Dark Sea, while implying all there is beyond Tevat is just a sea that is dark, is actually an incorrect name, because the Dark Sea is neither dark nor a sea. <laughs> We've been behooved, lied, deceived! I mean, some of it is dark and some of it is a sea, but all it simply is is land and sea that does not fall under the dominion of Celestia and the Archons, with a bit of Arad ever 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 Adurix Arkwright stating, quote, the coastal nations of Tevat refer to the region beyond the protection of the Seven as the Dark Sea. It is said that many defeated gods refused to live under the new order of the Seven, so they fled to remote islands and became evil gods. However, their powers come from the same source as Rex Lapis, separate from this all-devouring darkness. So it's just normal land, or I shouldn't say normal, you'll see why in a bit. But there are things like plains of grass and lush forests in the Dark Sea. So for instance, Onkonomiya is said to be in the Dark Sea, with the jade branch of a distant sea, writing, quote, Fleeing into the Dark Sea, the god that had lost everything met the abandoned people who had nothing within the ocean depths. Thus, it elected to remain and become their Oribashi no Mikoto, their Watatsumi Omikami. Obviously, this is talking about Oribashi and Onkonomiya. Now, with that said, there is a point of confusion regarding the Dark Sea that I have, and it's this. 
Is Conria not the exact same? I mean, they're not ruled by any of the seven, and they are directly under Sumeru, just like how Ankonomiya is under Inazuma. Yeah, they still got gangbanged by Celestia and the Archons, despite the fact that they technically don't rule over them, so I don't know. What is up with that? This isn't even the only time this has happened. The Celia race lived in the Dark Sea, and I mean, we all saw how that ended. And they sent Azor Bashi to death for reading before Sun and Moon in the Dark Sea. <laughs> What's going on here? So I guess if they choose, Celestia can still exercise their will over the Dark Sea, even if the Archons can't? But if that's the case, why not just, like, just abduct the Dark Sea then? Or, I mean, I don't- I didn't say that right. Annex them? Why not just- yeah, annex the Dark Sea then. Anyway, as you guys might have caught wind of earlier, the Dark Sea was where the gods who lost in the Archon War fled to if they didn't want to be ruled over by the Archons. Well, thankfully we now know the mysterious fates that befell some of them, as one Wolf King who ventured into the Dark Sea wrote, quote, This wasteland is said to be a land beyond the dominion of the deities, inhabited only by grotesque ghostly remains of fallen gods, where the former palaces of the Seelies now stand empty. What killed these gods, however, is not known. Maybe it was each other. Maybe it was some ghastly force altogether. Ooh. But that's <laughs> but that said, the Wolf King saw all kinds of other things on his trip in the Dark Sea, such as open plains, monster dungeons, and Celia ruins. Yet, the most mysterious thing he saw was an ashen white fair maiden singing a song and strumming a lute. The wolf sat before the girl and felt at peace, forgetting his pain of hunger, thirst, and loneliness. The singer said this, quote, the chirping of insects on a long gone autumn night is the chorus of exiles, singing mankind's most ancient song as they live out their plight. Stripped of all that the body once held close and the soul once held dear, song and memories are all now that remain of yesteryear. The last singers, the first Sealy, they played their final tune in the halls of angels. Other Sealy soon flocked toward the singer, also enthralled by her melody. When the wolf asked what her song was, a song of the Sealy replied the pale young maiden in a soft voice. Long, long ago, we wrote this song for the human savages, yet now we sing it to mourn our own fates. Look, I'm not saying this was Columbina, I'm just saying my headcanon is she has some sort of connection with Columbina. I mean, they both like singing, they both probably have some connection to the Seelie race, and angel references. I I'm telling you, man, the pieces are there. That aside, however, this once again raises the question of how Celestia can exert their will over the Dark Sea if they don't rule it. I mean, is it in the eggshell or not, is kind of the question that I'm just baffled by. Anyway, this is pretty much all we know about the Dark Sea. I'm sure eventually we'll visit the more important parts of it. We've already been there with Ankonomiya and technically the Golden Apple Archipelago. I mean, we'll especially probably visit the Seelie Ruins, seeing as it has all the symptoms of a playable area. I mean, dead gods, ancient ruins, monster dungeons. This feels like a surefire thing. Uh, maybe it has something to do with Tivat's future, maybe not. I'm, I still don't get the whole, is it in the egg thing or not. Maybe someone can clarify. No, please do let me know. I love being uh, corrected. It's my favorite thing to do in the world.